Last year, I backed a project on Kickstarter called the Next Dock 2. I was really excited to use it with the Raspberry Pi and other similar devices. It took a while, but last week it finally got here. I showed you guys on Instagram and a bunch of you said that you'd like to see a quick video about it. So here we are. All right, so I hardly ever do review type videos. So I just want to reiterate, I was a backer on this project, a regular customer. They don't know that I'm doing this video. They don't even know that I exist. So this may look like just a generic laptop, but it isn't. It's basically just a screen, keyboard, and mouse with a battery inside to make all of those things portable. There have been a few similar devices like it in the past. I'll compare it to a few of those in a minute. Now, if you're into Raspberry Pi or you're a huge nerd like me and are into all kinds of other single board computers as well, you can probably see why I'm excited about this. Not only is it a great setup for using these tiny computers, with the battery inside, suddenly they all become portable as well. So you can take them back and forth from school or work or makerspace, whatever. It's also great for using with some projects that we've seen come out of the community, like the Cart Boy from Postman and Novel, or Kite's Circuit Sword for the Game Boy Zero project. And with the Circuit Sword, since you've got a Raspberry Pi 3 in there, you can actually install a desktop environment and it's pretty usable. Really, you can use it on anything that has HDMI output, but it's especially nice for things that are able to be powered off of USB. Another big use case that they advertise this thing for is being able to plug in an Android phone and basically turn it into a Chromebook. I'm not an Android user, so I couldn't test that specifically, but I did plug it into a mini laptop that I have, and I was able to use all the functionality with only one cable. It worked great, but I should note I wasn't able to charge it at the same time. I guess it just wasn't able to put out quite enough power for a big device like that. So here's what you get in the box, at least with the Kickstarter edition. Basically all the cables you might need to use it. The only really special one is this USB-C to micro USB and type A splitter and a 60 watt USB charging brick. It even comes with a few adapters that they specifically call out as being for the Raspberry Pi 4, so that's a nice touch. Along the side here are a few ports, but they're kind of reverse of what you would find in a regular laptop. For example, this is HDMI input instead of output. This USB-C port is for charging, and these are two different kinds of input and output. On the other side is a micro SD card reader, a headphone jack, and a USB type A port, which means that there's a USB hub inside here as well. This supplies a surprising amount of power too. The Raspberry Pi 4 is notoriously power hungry, but I never once saw the low voltage indicator come on the screen or saw the red light blink. The battery in here is 51 watt hours, which is similar to what you'd find on something like a MacBook Air. I ran a few tests on it with the Pi 4 running the latest RetroPie dev build on a few different systems, and it lasted right at four hours on each of them, which is again, not bad considering how power hungry the Raspberry Pi 4 is. Then just for kicks, I ran the same Super Metroid test with the Pi Zero, and it lasted five hours and 38 minutes. So if you want some portable 16-bit era gaming or do some lightweight coding or something like that, it's pretty great for that. The keyboard is very nice for typing on. It sort of reminds me of the older MacBook Pro keyboards and it's backlit too. The trackpad on the other hand is kind of garbage. It works and even has a few multi-finger gestures, but it feels very cheap and reminds me of a netbook or a Chromebook. The screen is pretty nice though. It doesn't get quite as bright as I'd like, but it is sharp and it has good viewing angles. It's 13.3 inches and 1080p. I only really have two big issues with this thing. The first is a build quality issue. The right hand USB type A port is incredibly tight on mine and I'm not sure if that's just an issue with the way some things line up on my unit in particular or if it's a widespread issue. But yeah, it's just plain difficult to use and pretty annoying. The other issue I have is that it is incredibly aggressive with how quickly it turns itself off if it stops receiving any kind of a video signal. So for example, a default Raspbian install will blank the screen after a few minutes. When that happens, it just shuts itself off because it thinks you're done using it. So you're definitely gonna wanna disable screen blanking and use a screensaver. So like I mentioned earlier, there have been a couple of similar devices to this in the past. One is the first version of the next dock. I took a pass on that one because the keyboard and mouse were Bluetooth, which would be a pain to use with things like the Raspberry Pi because you need a keyboard to be able to pair it with it in the first place. The other popular one that I've seen is the Pi Top, but it's pretty bulky because you're meant to mount a Pi inside of it, which also limits its ability to be used with other devices. And it's $300, which is even more expensive than the next dock too, which I think is the biggest thing that'll probably turn people off of the next dock too. If you already have a setup for using things like a Raspberry Pi, it's hard to justify $260 just to make that portable. 
I should note though, they are coming out with a slightly cheaper model this summer. It'll have a touch screen with a slightly bigger 14 inch panel for $230. That's about all the information they've released about it so far though. Uh, so no idea how it compares to the next Doc 2 otherwise. Anyway, I think that's about all I wanted to cover. If you guys have any questions, be sure and drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Huge thanks to my Patreon supporters as usual. You will see their names at the end of the video. And yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.